today on the programme, we ask an expert if conflicting legal frameworks are mitigating against better electricity supply in Nigeria. Our guest, a legal practitioner, Ayodele Oni, who has extensively participated in the power deregulation sector and privatisation transactions at Bloomfield Law Lagos. He believes that there is a lot of indiscipline in the sector and what he calls vested interests affecting delivery and infrastructural development. Also, judges have been tasked to come up with innovative ideas and models to vigorously tackle delay in justice delivery on the occasion of the 2018-2019 legal year in Lagos. Plus, our question of the week where we look at the principle behind the bro card that in private contracts contain clauses between parties must be kept. That's a lineup on this episode of Law Weekly. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Millicent Walker. Currently, only about 40% of Nigeria's population is connected to the energy grid, whilst power supply difficulties are experienced around 60% of the time. At best, average daily power supply is estimated at four hours or slightly more depending on where you live. Although several days can go by without any power at all, and successive governments have always said that power will be better. Electricity provision is getting better. And yes, they've also said, let's be patient. But at what point and what time will this patience yield fruit? What effect have we felt, especially in sectors of agriculture and industry, for our economic development? My guest believes that since the Electricity Power Sector Reform Act of 2005 and other regulations, modest progress has been made in creating a regulatory environment but sees more conflict in implementation. Privatization started really started about 2001 because the idea, the concept up to having the legislation, yes, the actual um, taking steps was 20, from 20, about 2010, 2011 when it was full, full blown and, um, and, and over was about November 1st, 2013. Yeah, so I think we've, gone, we've, we've made progress, to be honest. We're not where we should be, but we've made, we definitely have made pro progress. So the, the, the Reform Act, the Power Reform Act of 2005, how come it's still something that works, especially when we decided to privatize in 2013? Okay, um, in, in my own view, I think it was well thought out. I think that um, usually, Legislation, regulations are vehicles for implementing policy. There was a policy framework um, through the National Electric Power Policy, which specified where we wanted to be in 20 years, in 15 years, in 30 years. Why not even quite there? Because certain things ought to have been done five years ago, six years ago. Some of them are just being done now. Uh, I'll see conflicts in more, in more of implementation. For example, um, there are issues around the eligible customer regulations and whether the discos are going to be pushed out of business or they're going to lose many of their customers, particularly the high value customers, maximum demand customers and those, those categories of customers. For, for many of them, that's a problem. And they consider that a conflict. But I have a slightly different view. I think it's not a conflict because first, the Electric Power Sector Reform Act provides for some um, transition electricity payments to the distribution companies under certain circumstances, one. Secondly, there is even an opportunity for the electricity distribution companies to remain conduits. That's the just um, transportation media or transportation bodies under distribution use of system um, agreements. So even if you want to buy electricity, there's still that option that you use a distribution company already that has a strong network. The problem is where they do not have sufficient infrastructure, where the quality of the infrastructure is in question. Otherwise, I mean, no investor wants to invest in new um, electricity infrastructure, particularly from the distribution end, and then have to wait for 20 years to recover their cost. They would rather use infrastructure already in place. It's only when that infrastructure does more harm than good that they would rather just go it themselves or get someone to uh, go through another medium. So I think that the problem is more from um, the distribution companies not um, being up to speed in certain cases. Uh, when you speak to the distribution companies, they will say things around the multi-year tariff or that the tariffs being um, not economical, not, not cost-reflective, such that uh, the cost of 
getting that electricity by the discos outweigh the cost outweighs uh, the price at which they sell that's one of the arguments and not a bad argument so it's interest it's everyone sitting together uh, and then determining what what's best what's the best way forward for the sector and and uh, that's one of the ways we, we can make progress you know, it's not so much of about blame, a, a blame game. game or yeah, name calling and all of that. So let's look at the regulatory body, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC. Um, on the issue of tariffs again, um, I mean, how, how would you say, how does it work? I mean, the tariff order, uh, the tariff regime for, for them? Because electricity is seen as a very crucial and the number of natural monopolies, the prices are regulated. And what you can make as profit, generally speaking, your returns are generally predetermined, but also depending on how efficient you are. There's a baseline for efficiency. If you exceed that baseline, you probably do make more money. So the multi-tier tariff order just specifies um, the tariff system from generation down to distribution. So everyone knows what they should be paying. So a code disco has got its own tariffs. It can be slightly different, D different parts, taking into consideration several things, including cost and all of that and for, um, f at the moment Nigeria's, current, Nigeria's policy has been a sculpting, uh, sculpting policy where initially it's not as cost reflective as it should be but the intention is that over time it should become that but the problem has also been that for two years or so now there's been no review of the tariffs because under the MITO tariffs should be reviewed by annually minor reviews I think every six, six months, months if there is a 5% plus or minus 5% change in um, gas price, generation capacity, um, consumer price index, I mean those those factors, forex, um, yeah, but it's not been done, there have been changes, of course, serious changes in the last 2-3 years, but it's not been done for, for 3 years, maybe maybe a bit more, so that's been a problem. And this would be upward review or? Yeah, it could be upward review or could, could actually be downward, but I mean the chances are that it will be upward because those indices have been plus plus five, not minus five. And this would mean that people would have to pay more for electricity. It would mean that people would have to pay more for electricity. But it works in, in both ways. If people need to pay more or have to pay more, then we become more energy efficient. The, the average Nigerian doesn't feel that power sector is improved. They don't have sufficient, they don't have light, light, um, electricity, in, enough electricity to, to think that they should be paying more. That's a problem within at the moment. So even if there's, there's reason to review, for maybe political reasons also, government is unlikely to review now. That might happen after the elections, but the electoral forces, they might be looking at that and that it may even adversely affect um, their electoral fortunes, their fortunes at the polls. So I doubt that that will be done. But I think that with time it should be done because if something if it's not cost reflective, no businessman is going to do business where your cost of production is higher than your selling price. One question a lot of people have talked about is if corruption exists in that sector. Depending on how you define corruption, corruption is only when you, it's not only when you take a bribe or when you give a bribe or or any of those. It's when you do things wrong the wrong way or you, you do things wrongly. So yeah, we can't say there's, there's some corruption. I mean also because there's indiscipline. Indiscipline is corruption. Yeah, a lot of people say there's a lot of indiscipline in the sector. So um, they would say many of the discos pay 50% to 25% of what they ought to. They would blame that on the tariffs. But in some instances, you find some discos doing 90%, 80%. When they find out that other discos are doing 25%, there's no incentive for them to want to continue to do 85%. And they then want to do 25% like everyone else. And that might be the corruption more than anything else. So it's an indiscipline in the sector more than anything, anything else. So it's not so much of people stealing money. There have been issues around the $16 billion spent for to improve the Power sector. Power sector can actually be quite expensive. Um, anything energy, you need to spend a lot usually before you before you see those results you want. How much power do state governments and local governments have to also contribute to making you know electricity available to a lot more people in the country? Okay, that's a very interesting. That's a very interesting question because that's constitutional, and um, electricity is on the concurrent legislative list, which means that both the federal government and the state government can legislate. But um, to the extent that 
set to, to a certain extent when it comes to getting generation um, licenses it's still the it's still the national assembly that can legislate but issues around having generation plants for states like what legal states is known a few states are looking to do i understand some states or other states in the southwest and in the south south are doing a couple of other things so they, they, they've got a role to play particularly where it's collaborative play it's also interesting you mentioned uh, the national assembly legislating and another area that we've had a problem with so far is the PIB uh, still being in the assembly, although they've passed several parts, but mm -hmm. the major, most important parts, some would argue, are still with them, and it's been on going on for so long. Those less contentious issues like governance, who get passed easily, but fiscal issues, money, taxes, incentives, post government issues, those are usually very tricky issues in this part of the world. Um, yeah, that's what the challenge is. And the PIB would never have gotten to where it's gotten to in terms of having some bits of it if it's, if it's not been passed in piecemeal. Because uh, if it's one single document with all of the vested interests, it'll keep going around. But for those less contentious, they, they, they've moved pretty faster. So that's what the problem is. It, it just means the key thing we need to do in this country is to take policy, is to take um, nationalism ahead of our own individual interests. As long as we do not do that, we're not going to achieve the results we want. And as long as, and you'd hear people say that in developing countries, you need both strong men that mean well, and you need strong institutions. In more developed countries, they just need, they, they have the strong institutions already. Anyone who becomes president, there's a minimum performance you would expect. But in this part of the world, we don't have those institutions yet, so we need strong men that also help in, help in building those institutions. So in your experience, you know, as an oil and gas lawyer, when we look at the power sector, what do you think, how long do you think it would take us to get it right? We institutions? Get it right. We can get it right in two years, but uh, as long as um, uh, we stop um, the blame game and everyone decides to do things the way they ought to be done, reprising is right, um, NERC does penalize who they need to penalize, there's no regulatory capture, neither is, is, is NERC um, politically controlled, um, there's real um, neutrality and everyone is willing to pay and is willing to waste less. I think, I think we'll make progress. Many of these companies said we were going to reduce ATC and C by 50%. They, they all gave numbers and they stated how they were going to achieve those targets. They had KPIs and how they were going to achieve those targets. And um, there was a five year period within which they were to achieve those targets. But the, the, the issues have been even the, owner, the new owners or the preferred bidders, the, 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 key, uh, the core investors in those distribution companies said that the baseline that were used to determine what losses there were were wrong in the first place. That the baseline use was wrong in the first place. So they couldn't be held on their own prime promises too. And besides, government didn't keep some of its promises like ensuring that um, electricity prices were right and ensuring that certain things were done with respect to the greed and all of those. Because many of those distribution networks would pass power through the national grid due to the transmission system. And if, if the transmission system couldn't take as much power or uh, couldn't send as much power as they needed to them, that was the initial problem. So that was already a problem. So the document the basis, the uh, factual basis for much of the documentation was already, already wrong. So that's part of the challenge. So there's still a lot of losses, technical, commercial, and collection losses, but that's been reduced particularly with um, smart meters or with meters, generally speaking. When everybody gets metered, yeah. Yes, and quite a number of us, people still don't have meters, and there's a lot of electricity theft, even by individuals. So people bypass, people tend to want to pay for less electricity than, they, than they've actually used. That's been also been a problem. So I always say it um, when I have conversations around the electricity, uh, electric power sector that it's not, it's not just about government, it's not just about the ministry, it's not just about distribution companies, it's about everyone playing their role. Everyone being energy efficient, everyone reducing waste, everyone not stealing electricity, doing what it. For example, there's a Miscellaneous Offenses Act that uh, um, creates offenses relating to damaging electricity install installations, stealing electricity, all of that. That's, a, that's an old law. So it, so it goes back to the question whether we have a good 
legal regulatory regime. We do have a good legal regulatory regime. It's enforcement, it's implementation, it's whether everyone wants to play their role. Yeah, and it's, it's like wanting something good but not wanting to play your own role. We see everywhere else in the world, people talk about moving to other countries because it's organized, because people act properly. But we all mostly want to act wrongly, but want the benefit. So you want a country, you want Nigeria to be a great country where there's efficiency, everything works, but you get to work late, you steal electricity, you don't want to pay, for, you don't want to pay your bills, you know, all of that. And even the guys issuing the bills want to estimate and want to um, bill you more than what you've actually used. So it's, it's everyone, everyone has got a role to play.